Today we have a special guest. Joining us is Shauna Lee Coronado, who was our Garden Fest speaker. She's going to show us how to plant some water-wise containers. Shauna, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Well, thank you so much. It is so hot in Oklahoma, <laughs> right? We're just getting started. Well, one of the things that I work on all the time is how to green your life. And it's really important to conserve water. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to utilize good ways for, and positive ways for people in our community to save water. So you don't have to water your pots as much is a great example. And here we have a special planting technique that mm -hmm. I use for water-wise pots. Okay. okay, so the first step that we have to do is add all these water bottles that normally get thrown out in mm -hmm. the landfills and then that's just wrong I mm -hmm. want to recycle so I use these and the idea is that you really save a lot of weight and as well as space so yeah. when you, if you want to move your pots around they're gonna be a lot lighter with all the absolutely space filled up. it's easier to do mm -hmm. so once you put the the water bottles in the bottom mm -hmm. then you have to add paper or newspaper on the mm -hmm. top again things that you're going to throw out is the best way to go mm -hmm. we always Let's have reuse. paper to recycle absolutely. and this is just going to keep the soil from falling Fall down through. Mm -hmm. right okay. and the in reality when we plant our pots, we only need about that much soil. It's mm -hmm. just enough for the roots. We don't need to put it through the whole thing. So the next step is to use a conservation style of soil mm -hmm. mix. And so it's the regular soil mix. Okay. And we combine it with rotted manure. And I'm just gonna keep filling here for you. All right. And what does the manure do? For your the mix manure here. is a, well, it's a great tool actually. If you use manure, you don't have to use as much of the uh, fertilizer. And Oops. since we want to try and reduce fertilizer use and chemical use in our homes, mm -hmm. this is a great natural, organic way to grow your flowers. And so you can mix. I mix about three quarters of the soil mix and a quarter of mm -hmm. the rotted manure. And the manure also. Uh, holds a lot of moisture in it as well. Absolutely. It's going to help with uh, reducing the amount we have to water. So. <laughs> We're going to be filling forever. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do we add to this mix? I'll keep scooping Okay, here. you keep scooping and <laughs> I'll do the next thing here. Uh, the next thing that I like to add is the, the mycorrhizal. Okay. And it's a special fungus that helps plants. And, you know, I have to tell you, reading the container is great because uh, of the mycorrhizal because it really tells you how much you should mix in. Mm -hmm. um, typically, I go by a, about a quarter cup for a big pot. Okay. That makes it easy. And, and the soil moist crystals are just critical mm -hmm. because they really hold the soil uh, together. They keep the moisture in and the plants love it. I only water my pots about once a week through most of the summer. And Chicago, where I'm from in Chicago, is very hot. It does get very it hot does. there. Now, <laughs> when it gets to be 100 degree weather and it's in the, the late summer, maybe two times a week at the most, maybe mm -hmm. three, but usually one to two times a week is it for me. Mm -hmm. And so it really does conserve a lot of water. Now, I use another technique as well for um, conserving water, and that's to mix uh, perennials mm -hmm. and annuals together, and I try to do drought tolerant annuals. Okay. So why don't we show? So we get start started with started the started with the grass, mm -hmm. right? The this is one of my favorite grasses. It's a proven winners, and the reason I like any grass to be planted in a pot is it really uses less water compared to you know a mm -hmm. traditional annual would. And you wanted this kind of set of yeah, set And this is a uh, Red Riding Hood, this cultivars, um, right. one of the graceful grasses. And we it's also have, I'm going to put a second perennial in here. And I'm going to put it in the front of the grass. Mm -hmm. And this is a geranium, it's Jolly it's Bee. And the good thing about Jolly Bee is that it gets very full and arching. At the end of the season, when you're ready to take all the annuals out and clean up in the fall, you can take this perennial and put it right into the ground. Mm -hmm. So it's Absolutely. a really great planting technique. That's a great idea. So perennials and grass is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Now the next I have um, is the supertunia. The supertunia is wonderful because it really, besides becoming very large and just dripping over the side of the pot, I love that. Um, it's also drought tolerant and deer resistant. So animal resistant, if anything, is good. 
Um, Absolutely. If you had the number of rabbits that I have at my house. <laughs> we need to do something about squirrels around here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them actually in your gardens here at the university. Mm. All right. And then I have to tell you, this we have the orange symphony that we're planting in around the edges, which will be a great contrast yeah. to the petunias. I like the purple and the orange together. That looks yeah, really definitely. nice. But you know, one of my very favorites, and it's terrific to have a petunia growing with the euphorbia. This is the diamond frost euphorbia. And the reason I like that is it just explodes right out of the pot. You can see big mounds, petunias hanging over. It's just wonderful. And all drought tolerant plants, so it's really easy, less watering. It's a great idea. Okay, let's get some of the fill in around some of these plants here. We've got the soil level uh, pretty much at the top of the container and it's level with the tops of our plants, which is good. Okay. Excellent. And then you water in. Great. Mm -hmm. We always and, want to water our plants in when we're done. And what's really important is all of these containers, every single one of them, have a recycling symbol on the bottom mm -hmm. and they all need to be recycled. Absolutely. So take it down to the recycling center and do the right thing after that. And what's nice about this is, uh, let's go ahead and lift it. So we have okay. all that plastic in the it. bottom. Oh, it's, it's really easy. not that heavy at all. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, this is going to look fabulous here in our studio. Thank yeah. you so much. I love your gardens, and thanks for having me.